Greetings, citizens of the interwebs. My name is Yardell Perkins from Perkatech. I want to welcome you to the channel and to this video. In this one, I'll be showing you how to create pages and posts inside of WordPress. So this is going to be a very basic one-on-one -on -one video. You don't need to have any prior experience in this matter. So if you're just starting off from scratch, you can start right here. So let's get into it. So I'd like to start by giving you a brief overview of this instructional so you'll know exactly what you're going to hear about and when you're going to hear it. So first I'll be briefly going over the differences between pages and posts themselves. Next I'll be walking you through creating a page from scratch and then we'll discuss how you find and organize your pages as you create them for your website. And finally we'll be walking through the particulars of a post which is essentially a special kind of page and then we'll show you how to set up your site's blog page, which is where all your posts will end up. So as you can see, this is all very straightforward. There's not going to be any curveballs or anything from left field. So what are pages and how do they work? Well, pages are essentially dedicated individual sections of your site. If you were to think of your site as a house, each page would be a separate room in that house designed to hold specific information. Now most sites will have an about us blog or a contact page for example. Now there is a rough 100 page limit you can have to your site but at that point you're going to run into performance issues so it's good to keep it down to about five or seven pages if you can help it. So now let's talk about posts. If we continue with the house analogy in your house, let's say that you have a library or a study. In that particular room, you're likely to have a bunch of books, articles, or files that talk about separate pieces of information. Well, that's where posts come in. They're essentially individual articles or stories that you want to publish on your site. It could be a brief how-to, an opt-in on a major event, or even a personal rant. Now, given the nature of posts, and the higher frequency at which you'll be creating and producing those in relation to pages, you're likely to have far more of those on your site than pages. Now, by default, all of your posts will be found on the home page of your site when you initially create it, but you'll also be able to put them under a single dedicated page, which is usually named blog, but can be named anything you want as long as, long as you tell WordPress where it's at and that page will self populate as you go. Now there's no technical limit on the number of posts you can have but again the amount that you can actually have on your site before you run into problems is going to be managed largely by your platform and how powerful it is. Though again posts being what they are you'll be able to have way more of them. You'll likely have a few hundred before you even begin to run into issues that you'll notice. So now we're going to go from theory to actual practice. As you can see on the screen, I have what is a very basic and vanilla install WordPress. As of the time of this video, their base theme is 2017, and this is likely what you're going to see if you get a WordPress install set up right out of the box as it were. From here we're going to set up some pages, configure them, and publish them out to the site. And we're going to do this almost in real time. So you can take notes, follow along, stop, rewind, and do whatever you need to do to make sure that you understand what's happening. So to get started we're going to head into the dashboard by scrolling up to the name of the site 2017 in the upper left hand corner of the admin bar up top and we're going to click on dashboard and from there on the left side menu we're going to scroll down the pages and select add new and now that we're here the very first thing you're going to want to do with any new page you create is give it a name. So for the purposes of this demonstration, we're going to call this WP 101 page demo. 
you hit enter and and the permalink will automatically be created for this page which will allow you to directly link to it now later on we'll show you how to access it without using this but for now this is what you're going to get by default now if we scroll down a little bit you will see the content window which is where you'll do the bulk of your work creating any page or any post this is the same window you're going to see in both and as you can see it's a very basic and rudimentary text editor it's likely not anything you haven't seen before you'll just click in the cursor and and just start typing whatever text you want to show up on this page when you publish it see pretty simple now if you go up to the upper left here you have different headings or preformats you can do for the text on the fly but yeah this is the gist of it so now we're going to get rid of this text up here and just throw in some lorem ipsum copy so we can really have some text to really play around with to do that one site that I've used over the years which is free that I'm not affiliated with is called meet the Ipsums which is at meet the Ipsums.com and here it's kind of a grab all site to various types of dummy text that you can use to get some copy on the fly without typing it out by hand just so you can get a feel for how text will flow on a page or a site and as you can see there's several different versions here so you don't have to have that regular boring lorem ipsum and you can just switch it up so for the purpose of this demo we are going to go with the agency ipsum and as you can see here there you get to decide how many paragraphs and sentences you want we'll go with these defaults and yeah what they have here looks pretty solid so we're going to take all of this and throw it into our page so we're going to do a copy head back to our page and we'll do a paste and here okay now we have some text that we can really experiment and play around with now if you look slightly to the upper right of this content window you should see these two tabs visual and text visual is the WYSIWYG version of this page anything you put in that window in theory should show up on the page as is in that window when you publish it now if you click on the text tab this is going to be what you see which is essentially your page in more of a raw metadata format now just to show you how these tabs work together anything you type in one will show up in the other so just an example we're going to do our demonstration sentence from earlier quick brown fox jumps jumped over the lazy dog now if we click back to the visual window we have the same sentence shown in the more text editor friendly version but here in the text window you can take a little bit more control over the text if you're comfortable or when you get more comfortable getting your hands dirty with the underlying code now just as a quick example we're going to highlight our demo sentence here and try doing a strikeout which is one of the added things you can do in text that you can't do here in the WYSIWYG editor and as you can see we have this text striked out so we're going to get rid of that and that's just one of several things that you will be able to do 
on this side of the window that you can't do on the other when you get more comfortable but that's more of a 102 matter here as you can see we just gave our main sentence more of a raw code feel for, now for the time being you should just know that this is here and roughly how it works but for your first few pages you'll probably be fine just staying on the visual side and doing all your edits there now coming back to the visual side I've spaced out our agency Ipsum text just to make it a bit more easy to glance over at the eyes and now we're going to add in a simple header to our home page highlight center give it heading one and just real quickly we're going to jump over to the text side again just to show you one more time that everything we're doing here is being shown here in more of its raw metadata form and again you you probably won't want to mess with this right away but as you get more comfortable creating pages and sites you'll do most of your main work on the visual side and then come over to the text side to do some more granular edits so at this point it looks like we have enough to do at least an initial publish so let's see where our options are regarding that here in this publish window slightly to the upper right let's check out these defaults and what the other settings can be for status here we have draft but under that you also see pending review which will publish the page but only allow admins to see it I believe this is a setting I've never really needed to set myself so I usually just leave it draft under visibility again the default is public which is print what it sounds like set to this you hit publish anyone that comes to your site will be able to see the page password protected will publish the page but then require a password that you can set to access it private is another saying that I personally have never needed to use so I'm not sure exactly how it works but I think for these one-on-one -on -one purposes is something you may not need to bother with just yet now finally under publish again these are fairly self-explanatory the default is immediately which means you hit the publish button the page shows up on your site immediately if you want the page to show up at a certain day and time in the future you can set the options under immediately and have it scheduled to set at a later date now this is something you would more so do for a post than an actual page if you had a group of articles you want to automatically publish so you wouldn't have to worry about doing them on your own and remembering it but we'll get to that when we get into the actual post section of this walkthrough so for now we'll just stick with all these defaults and hit publish so now our site has officially published to the page as you can now see in the published window the status visibility and published date and time has updated accordingly so we're going to go to the link in the upper left and see what we have and here is our demo page now we scroll down a bit again as said earlier it looks pretty much the way the visual WYSIWYG editor on the page editor told us it would look at look like so it's all fine and dandy now if we go to the home page of our site and scroll down we'll see that we're getting our post 
which is the default for WordPress installations, but there's no way to access the page we just created. So if we were to come to this site clean off the internet, we'd have no way of knowing where it was at or if it even existed. So if we go back to the dashboard and now go to pages and all pages, you'll see in this other batch of pages I created for later use, we have our page. So it does exist. And if we want to bring it up again, we just need to come here and click on view. So we have the page is public and we are able to access it. But that's kind of a convoluted way to do it. So here we're going to create the menu system, which will allow you to more easily access pages as you go along making them for your site. So coming back to the dashboard, you can find menus under appearance and menus. You can also find it up top if you're on the front of your site. If you click on the site name and click menus here. So we'll click on this. And this is where you'll create the menu system for your website. So and first things first, same with pages, we're going to give our menu a name. And we'll just call it main menu. And now here, we get to set up the menu structure. So if we go over to the pages section on the left, we'll see the page we created along with some other ones I whipped up just for the sake of this demonstration. So we'll just click all of those in so we can start playing around with them. And then we click add the menu. Okay, now we have our base menu. Now at the moment, if we were to just leave it as is, and take a look at it, it would have these seven items as the main part in this order. But we're going to click and drag and see if we can organize them somewhat. Now, as you can see here, if you want certain parts of the menu to be sub menus under a main part you drag them under the part that you want to be the parent but then you slide it slightly to the right until it clicks into place and we'll do it again here do it again and there we go so now about us will be a top level entry but under it we'll have FAQ page and features now to bring our menu to life, we just scroll down the menu sections. And at the top, by default, if you create any new pages, you'll have to add them to the menu manually. But if you check this box, those pages will automatically be added as top level menu items. So if you put a page in and you want it to be a sub menu item, they'll automatically add and you'll just have to drag it under whatever you want. But we're just going to leave this alone for now. And we're just going to display location. And we want top menu for the scene. Click save. Done. So now let's take a, one more look at our home page. And now we have a menu all the sections we wanted, including our demo page that we just created. And here we have the sub menus for about us, blog, contact. Click our page demo. We have the demo page we just created, 
which we can now access directly from the website in all of its glory. So now that we've come back around to our demo page, let me show you a couple more things you can do with it to jazz it up. So if you go up to the edit page option in the menu up top, let's start by adding in a hero image. So first we want to click down some space for it. Use the cursor to position it. And then in the upper left, ab just above, we're going to click Add Media. And here's where you'll be able to take one of the images on your site and drop it into place. Now for this demo, I've thrown in some images and there are also some others from a base, another base scene that I used on the site previously. But when you do a vanilla install, this area will likely be blank. So just keep that in mind. So we're going to pick this skyline, throw in some alt text. The alignment will center it. And we're going to try full size, see what this looks like. Insert in the page. And that looks pretty nice. So we're going to leave it at that. Next, we're going to add a link to some text. So to do that, you'll want to highlight the text that you want to link. create actual insights and then in the toolbar menu up top you're going to pick the icon that looks kind of like a very small chain and once you click on that the small tool window will open up now from here you can just directly type in the address or page you want this text to link to but we're going to click on the gear so you can see the other options that you'll have Well, let's just throw some in right now. So here you have the link text. Up top, you'll type in the actual URL that you want to use. And then it's good practice to click this button here. So if someone clicks on this link on your page, it won't pull them away from your page to let them follow the link. So add link. That's ready. And so now we're going to update the page. So now it's page updated. So let's view it. And this looks pretty nice. We got our sprawling city line here. And we click on the link. Opens up the new tab. And takes us to the page that we linked it to. Now, as long as we're here, let's talk about this. One thing you may want to do with your pages or posts on occasion is add videos to them. The best way to do this while uploading directly to your site and slowing it down is to link to the video from another place, such as here on YouTube. So to show you how that would work, See if we can find the video here. And uh, this one looks like it'll do. Actually, no, let's try something else. Uh, here, let's go with this one. So you're going to click on this, and then you're going to right click inside the video and copy embed code.
Now from here, you're going to go back to the site. Here's our demo page. We're going to edit the page. Go up top, edit. Now for this, we're going to use the raw text editor. First, we're going to scroll down. And we're going to look for the general spot we want this video to show up in. Eh, here looks good. And we're going to paste that embed code as plain text. Now, this is what it looks like in the text editor. But when you go into the visual editor, here's your video. Again, pretty much the way you'll see it when this page is public on the live site. So we're going to take a look at that now. Update. Go to View Page. And here you have it. A, a nice video to jazz up the page without slowing down your page itself on its hosting platform. Or maybe local. So now we have a few pages to play around with. Let's talk about the page order. Now, again, starting from the dashboard, if you go to Pages and All Pages, you'll see all the pages that you create as you create them in this window. Now, by default, WordPress will just drop them in alphabetically as you go, one on top of the other, and not really organize them. Now, as far as WordPress is concerned, this is perfectly fine, but for the sake of your sanity and ease of management, one method I might suggest is to have the page order here follow the order of your menu structure, however you set that up. So if we go back to the menu up front. Here we have Home, About Us, Blog, Contact, and our page demo. So what I normally do with my sites is starting from zero, I'll set the order of the top level pages in increments of 10 and any sub pages in increments of ones. So here, home would be zero, a boss would be 10, FAQ page would be 11, this would be 12, blog would be 20, contact page would be 30, and page demo would be 40. So jumping back into the dashboard, we'll go to pages and all pages, and we're going to take it from the top starting at home and doing quick edit. And here's the order box that we'll want to set for all the pages. Now home, we want to be zero, so this one we can leave alone. But the next one we're going to want to set is about us. We do quick edit on that. First, let's review the menu order. Home's going to be zero, so about us will be 10. And this will be 11 and 12. So quick edit again. Order. This is going to be 10. Update that. And now next, just check it as we go so we don't get lost, is going to be FAQ page. So we do quick edit on this. So this is going to be 11, but again, following the order of the menu structure, we want this to be a child, logically, of about us. So we do that by going to the window just above order that says parent. And right now it's main and we're going to set that to about us. Click update. And now you see there's a little bar next to the page which says that it's a child of something. Now WordPress knows that it's a child of about us and this will all organize itself once we do a refresh. 
So do an FAQ page. Again, that's about us and 12. So coming back to the menu, we want this to be 20, 30, and 40. So do a quick edit. Blog is going to be 20. Contact page is going to be 30. And last but not least, our demo page is going to be 40. Update. So now we have the order numbers the way we want them. So we'll do a quick screen refresh. And now as you can see, the pages are logically listed in the same order as our menu. So we'll do a quick review. That's zero. That's 10. That's 11 under about us, 12 under about us, blog is 20, contact page is 30, and page demo is 40. Nice. So again, just to reiterate, this is not a convention you have to follow in creating your sites. It's one I like to use, but you might want to consider it, at least for your first few sites until you get more comfortable doing something of your own. Now, the last matter we're going to discuss regarding WordPress pages is how your site reads. Now, by default, when you create a new site, your home page will show your most recent posts. But if you have another page, a more static page that you want to serve as your home page, and a page that you want to serve specifically as your blog page, you'll have to set that up in the dashboard under settings and reading. Now here, you'll see by default, the home page displays your latest posts. To change that, you just click the radio box to a static page. And from here, you just choose which page you want to serve as the home page and which page you want to hold your posts on. So here, home page, we're picking home, post, we're picking blog. Here, as far as full text and summary, as far as articles, you might want to do summary. And as far as search and invisibility, as long as your site is under development, you'll want to keep this box checked so that search engines aren't crawling your site before it's ready. But when you're ready to launch, you want to make sure you uncheck this. So we're going to click on Save. Now if we go to Pages, you'll see now our home page has now been specifically marked as Home by, or Front Page by WordPress and blog has been marked as the post page. So we come and visit the site. Now if we scroll down, we're getting our home page. And this is something I previously made. Now if we come to blog, now this is where the posts on your page are going to, for want of a better word, live. With this, this pretty much covers everything you'll need to know to get started making pages in WordPress. From here, we're going to move on to making posts. So to get started, again, taking it from the top of the dashboard menu here on the left, we're going to slide just a little bit of a ways down to the thumbtack icon, which says posts. And from here, we'll select Add New. And the first thing you'll notice here is that the window you're looking at is, for the most part, the same as the window you were shown up so far here in this instructional for pages. As I stated earlier in this walkthrough, 
a good way to think of a post is just as a special type of page. As you can see, as far as creating the title, and as you'll soon see putting in the content, you'll be doing a lot of the same things and using the same techniques you'll use to make a page. The differences will come in regarding the specific options you can set on the side, one of which you can already see to write, which is format, and the others being the category, tags, and the featured image. And here we're just going to again, throw in some quick content. Well, see if we can do some quick adjustments to this image on the fly to play around with it some more. Yeah, it looks a little better. And just as a quick tip, once you put an image into a page or a post, you can just hover your mouse over it and quickly move its position like so. Here we'll jump it to the right, back to the left, and we'll put it back in the center. We click this icon, this quick box pops up where we can add some alternate text. And now we're just going to throw in some more dummy copy really quick. Let's see. Let's go some coffee Ipsum this time. All right, that looks like enough copy to play around with. That picture can pretty much stay there. We'll just go with these defaults. Nothing changes here in this window. So let's talk about these other windows, which represent the specific tweaks you'll have for posts. In this first one, for format, this will allow you to tell WordPress to treat a post as a specific type. Now, for my purposes, I've never needed to set anything other than standard, and as you can see, although you have different versions like audio and image, there's nothing you really can't do inside of a standard image so you probably won't need to change any of this for your first few posts starting out so again keeping it one-on-one -on -one, I'd say for the time being you you're probably going to be fine just with standard and not digging into the rest of these until later next you'll have categories and this is where you'll get to logically group your posts at a high level. So if there's a specific matter that a group of your posts will deal with, you can create a category for it. Let's say demo posts. And we'll click on categorized. 
So in theory, if you're going to make a bunch of other demonstration posts for this site and you want it to be able to put them all together in one place, you would give them this category name. And if you get a bunch of them, but use some small group, they'll show up in this tab. Next, we're going to go down to tags, which is essentially a subcategory. So if there's another subject matter that you know that several posts speak to, but you don't want to create an outright category for it, you can put it here. So let's say you have a bunch of posts which talks about, eh, what's a good tag? Uh, targets. And we'll put in a couple more here. And yeah, that's good. So we'll leave it that. So finally, we're going to deal with the featured image. Now this box here will dictate the display image that goes with your post when it's being listed in your post page. And Again, this one is pretty self-explanatory. You'll just click on the link. It'll take you to the media section and you'll just pick a picture to drop in. And let's go with this one. All right. So, pretty happy with all that. Let's come back up here and publish it. And let's see what our post looks like. All right, and there's our large feature image at the top. And here's the page. And here's the actual post showing the content. Now, no, in here, as you can see, we have the listings for the category and the tags. Now if we come back to home, let me click on our blog page. As you can see, this page automatically updated itself with our latest post. Now coming back to the dashboard and heading all the way down to settings and permalinks, this is where you'll be able to define the structure of your posts. Now by default, it'll be your website name, the date, and the name of the post. But if you're not going to be posting too often, you may want to consider changing this to just the post name, which as you can see is second from the bottom, which might make it easier for sites such as Google or 
search engines to crawl your site and direct people to specific posts when they're doing searches for keywords. As you can see here, Now, however, if you're going to be posting on more of a regular schedule, like you'll be doing several posts in a week or maybe even a day, then one of the ones above, day and name or month and name, might be better. So save change to that. And if we go back to our site, And if you take the tooltip, look at the tooltip way in the lower left hand corner, you'll see that the permalink for that page is changed and it's a bit more cleaner. So, the very last matter I'll be speaking to you about in this post walkthrough and video will be done with post comments. So, by default, at the bottom of every post, there will be some type of section where a visitor can come in and leave a comment. So we'll just type in some demo commentary here. Looks simple enough. Post it. And it will show up right on the page. And for the most part, by default, WordPress will allow anyone or anything in the way of a bot to just come in and post. Coming to the dashboard, we come to the comments section. This is where you'll largely be able to manage your comments, see who left what, and take comments out if someone leaves something you'd rather not have posted. Now we come to settings and discussion this is where you can tweak the defaults which dictate what people need to do to be able to leave comments and how long comments can stay on your page and other things of that nature. And as you can see, depending on what the purpose of your site is, you'll probably want to turn some of these off, turn some of them on, but all of these are pretty self-explanatory. So that does it for this introductory presentation on creating WordPress pages and posts. I'd like to thank you for hanging out for the entire video. By all means, save and favor it so you can come back and reference it. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments and I'll field them as they show up. If you'd like to find me, here's my actual website address. As far as the big three socials, just search for Perkatech and you'll find me fast enough. As far as my vid channels, I have two. If you're looking at this video, you clearly found me on one, but you can also find me on the other. Again, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something.